Good afternoon or evening, everybody. Uh, so we are here tonight, well, and this morning in the US with Jen from My Reading Pets and Parrot Kindergarten. Uh, so, hey, Jen, how are you going? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for inviting me. Thank how you for you? coming. I know you're so busy, so it's mm -hmm. super cool to have you pop in. And I know it's like 7 a.m. there, so <laughs> which is incredibly early to get up and talk about anything. <laughs> it's a beautiful sunrise. It's been a great sunrise. <laughs> So, uh, just so everyone's aware, I, I'm sure there are people joining us who have seen Jen around, but Jen is an attorney, an animal cognition trainer, researcher, writer. Uh, she's an international speaker. She has some peer-reviewed studies out about uh, parrot cognition, uh, amongst a bunch of other things, um, some articles that she's written. So she has recently opened up Parrot Kindergarten, which is a super cool little school about teaching birds to communicate, essentially. So that's a very basic kind of roundup of what that is. I'll get her to tell you a bit more about it later. Uh, but Jen, what a an awesome kind of uh, career you have there. So <laughs> it's very different going from being an attorney to being an animal cognition trainer. Did you want to tell us about how you went from one to the other? Yeah, it's funny. Sometimes you think your life is on this trajectory and it's a clear trajectory. And then all of a sudden your life spins off and it's a completely different like plan than you ever had before. Um, so I was, um, I was, an attorney and um, I have a parrot named Ellie and she's a goblin cockatoo. And when I got her, I, you know, the dialogue in the bird community has changed over time in such good ways. You know, when I, a long time ago, there was a lot of punishment and timeouts with birds. And, you know, that dialogue changed so much to be like positive reinforcement and foraging and, you know, training. And so when I got Ellie, I was aware of these changes that had come into the bird world. And um, I had all the intentions of having positive reinforcement, only good experiences and, you know, foraging diet and lots of enrichment and out of cage time. And she had all of those and, and such. But then I also, you know, she presented with a lot of behavior problems. Um, she screamed and she bit and she like chased, you know, her bird sisters and like <laughs> the wall and eat the screen and like and she honestly I mean it wasn't just birds being cute mischievous little creatures like she seemed really miserable and um and I would try to kind of reach her because I was committed to this creature that was in my life so I would um you know train her and I trained her on all kinds of really cool tricks and stuff and she loved learning so I knew that the days that she was learning you know, I knew I'd have an easier day that day, but um, I, you know, she, I would like, my creativity was not very big. And so we didn't have a lot of like, <laughs> ideas about what to learn. And ultimately she would go back into these behavior problems. And I think she was miserable. I was having a hard time with her for years. So I used to teach children how to read in the inner city and I knew the English phonic code. And I also knew that people said like cockatoos are like kids, just like, you know, Treat them like a toddler and what do you teach toddlers you teach some colors and shapes and counting and phonics so i started teaching her these things and she just soaked it up i mean she started discriminating colors and then shapes and the counting and then um and then i started i mean i didn't think it would work but i knew the english phonic code and i started teaching her phonics and um and she became a creature transformed a completely different cockatoo when she was learning these really difficult concepts and um and our relationship transformed into like a really like close friendship um and and she i, I was like this can't be real like animals don't read <laughs> you know and um and that, that that also that was one of the things that changed the course of my life because i wanted to know is it real is it true and then um and then doing that we started linking up with researchers from university of miami western oregon university and right now i'm working with amazing researchers from um the university of chile and purdue university um and um and so this need to know is it real 
coupled with the fact that it really did change our relationship. And then I started teaching the other birds in my life. And then we started teaching other, you know, people who had birds. Um, now I'm probably more in bird research and bird training than in law, which <laughs> that's awesome and and like I guess I, I I don't know if I was in one of the earlier groups but obviously yeah, yeah, there you go yeah so um I you know really privileged to call Jen a good friend we talk most days in our little group of parrot mamas um but the way I met Jen was when she first started teaching other people about training their birds to read so which was really really cool and we kind of all just stuck together from there which was you know awesome that was you know four years ago now I think yeah. it was a long time yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. can't claim to be as good at, at, as you at keeping up with teaching these concepts to my birds but <laughs> I love watching you do it I love watching the progression of where you started with your little classes and your your first little um book to where you are now and that book's been translated a few times hasn't it yeah it's been translated into um, other languages and distributed um across europe and um and we it, it is funny to see you know in the sense of being a human like like what we think and then what what turns out to be true with animals it, when i first wrote that book I think I had been, I have an umbrella cockatoo named Isabella. And at the time, I think she was two. And I was trying to teach her the same things I was teaching Ellie, my Goffin's cockatoo. And I think when I wrote the book, I said, well, I don't think she'll ever be able to learn because, um, like, learn to read. Because she was really struggling to even just touch, discriminate between objects. She could touch, but she wasn't, like, discriminating very well. And, um, and so it reminds me that we can never underestimate our animals because um, because she went on to learn how to read, not just to learn how to read, like to perform beautifully under blind condition testing with university research. And the words they she decoded, they call it decoded, um, were fourth grade level. And so it is, it's fun to like see where, you know, we were a long time ago and then see how, how life unfolds, but how animals surprise us because they're just amazing and they're smart and, Yes, they are. And uh, yeah, just th some of those words that I'm <laughs> pretty sure that they decode some words that I can't in some <laughs> cases. <laughs> like, I'm just, yeah, waiting for them to start taking over the world. Um, <laughs> and you've also done some math research. Are you still in the midst of the math research? Yeah, so um, the it's 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 fun to see um, you know how different types of birds can perform under research conditions, and in some ways, I think it's such a testament to um, each of the different types of species for like different birds that are part of research, and um, in collaboration with Hilla from um, Germany and Dr. Rhodes, um, she was at the Western Oregon University at the time, and now she works for the American Federation or Foundation for the Blind. Um, we designed a research project to test um, how birds perform with counting and not just counting like quantity, but associating those quantities with actual numerals and then being able to count quantity or numerals, just like we do. I mean, if somebody shows you three dots and four dots and says like, how many, you know, can't play two seven, but in our accuracy rate is all that high necessarily, even humans. And, um, or if somebody said, what's five plus two with little numerals, you know, you would probably choose seven. So, um, so we did that in our project included 14 parrots from around the world, everything from little tiny budgies and the parrot in Chile to macaws, cockatoos, African greys, Amazons, rourke uh, parakeet. Um, it was just a, oh, wow. a, yeah, it was an incredible variety of different birds. And, um, and we did them in little phases. First of all, it was like, can they count to five with numerals? Like, or not numerals, with um, dots. Like, if you hold up 
if you say three dots with three and hold up three cards that have different numbers of dots on them, could they choose quantity and then we changed it to numerals? Can they count to five? And then we went quantity to 10 and then numerals to 10. And then ultimately we had them adding up to 10, like what's four plus five and, you know, and the birds were, they were amazing. They were like, I mean, you know, in your head, you kind of rehearse like what you're going to say or the birds are doing so well. I'm like, well, it's not always whatever. And they just, they kicked butt. And the little tiny ones kicked butt. The Rourke's parakeet, I think, had like 100% across the wow. board. All 100% adding to 10. And um, the little wow. did great. The, um, Chili, yeah, he, they were amazing. They're so smart, all different sizes. So smart. Yes, and that's that's so fabulous to see, I think, within your community and the training that you're doing is that it's not just African greys or um, cockatoos. Mm -hmm. It's all species of all sizes mm -hmm. uh, and they're all learning much of the same thing and successful. So I think that's kind of fabulous because that's, you know, so often budgies and cockatiels and all of those little species are, are written off or they're treated as starter birds. And realistically, when we look at this, we can actually go, well, no, because here they are and they're, you know, they're engaging in the same level of concept training as uh mm -hmm. cockatoo or mm -hmm. a yeah or an african gray or something else it's amazing it really i mean the little i mean it, that's exactly it i walked in with a little bit of this of this preconceived notion of what they're going to be able to accomplish absolutely i have those preconceived notions and now i don't i mean they just blew it out of the water because the little ones are sitting there choosing their little, I mean, they're like, they're like fairies, you know, there's little cards that they're choosing from. And it was just, it was remarkable. It's, it's such a privilege to work with them. Yes. And to work with their client, their, their humans that are so mm -hmm. willing to engage with them like that as well, which is it really was cool. beautiful. Yeah. The owners are incredible. They're so dedicated and they, um, they were dedicated to their birds and you could see how much they loved them and how proud they were of their birds, but also like their commitment to showing up to research. And sometimes it's hard, sometimes it takes a little while. And um, they were really, um, it was cool to, to see such love and the bond between them and the birds. That's fabulous. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, so you recently opened up Parrot Kindergarten. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, dream come true. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, I love it. And I love your website. It's literally so adorable. I will, um, I'll bring it up on the screen in a moment. But, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we used to teach classes and you were in our very first like guinea pig class so many years ago. And then, um, and then I, I guess Joe and I had talked about, you know, we had a little book that was out and it had all the information in it and stuff. But um, I realized that I wanted those who were in our community to have a lot of support and nurturing along the way. And um, and I guess it, it's just because I felt like um, I hadn't necessarily known of all the resources that were in the world back when I was a new bird mom and I was really struggling with Ellie. And certainly there was a lot of frustration because I'm giving her all everything I'm supposed to give her, and why is she such a tough little creature? And um, and so so when I was envisioning, you know, providing resources for learning um, in the community, and the learning includes like symbol-based communication with yes/no objects. It includes um, tablet training with you know, a calm board where they can learn to push, you know, buttons to communicate, um, and very also a simple um, trust-building enrichment like enjoying picture books together or doing crafts or teaching symbol-based communication with like pictures um you know when, when i was imagining doing this and i imagined myself as a like a young bird mom again and i knew that um there was a chance i would need more support than just watching videos because 
because I remember like trying to learn how to do stuff and not always knowing how to do it. And so, um, so I wanted to build a place that was like a community with nurturing and coaching and, and the sense that whatever steps anyone was taking, there was help for like, oh, we have a little, like, if, if you're having a challenge, come, we'll help you. We'll help you with whatever that looks like. So, um, so yeah, we, we, um, created a, we created a program and it has a lesson library, um, with we call them five minute lessons i mean it's a busy everybody everybody's busy life is busy and and i used to also also think like oh you know to teach my bird anything it's going to take like 20 minutes of time every single day and i just don't have like 20 minutes but i could find five like five minutes a couple times a week that's what we say like these the whole program is designed with five minute lessons a couple times a week and then, um, so the videos are five minute lessons and we have, you know, Ellie's lesson library that has communication and crafts and books and, you know, fun connecting um, and communication oriented training. And then we also have a tablet lesson library. It's also five minute lessons, but we teach the birds to enjoy tablet games and tablet apps and also use the Calm board. Um, and then there's also um, weekly coaching on Thursdays um, and uh, monthly for the full program, like all the moms and dads get together once a month and we have awards and we share, and we break out into rooms and chat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we, 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 just, we drink wine and we talk <gasps> about birds for a couple of hours. So, <laughs> so it's like there's a lot going, but I always envision like, myself as a young bird mom and what would what were the resources that would have helped me to have such a like more gentle <laughs> experience with like having a complicated little creature and um it's been wonderful it's been wonderful we opened it in april and we have almost 100 families um wow. between, to the two programs um we have a light program that's just access to the libraries and a behavior workshop and the full program um includes like coaching calls and the monthly get together and a private Facebook group. And yeah, it's, it's a dream come true. It's absolutely, I just, I love our families and I love, um, I love all of us working together in the community. That's fantastic. That's, and it's so cool how quickly it's picked up and that there are so many people accessing this kind of information because like you said, finding that support and finding good information out there on the internet can be so difficult as well. Yeah. There's so much yeah. misinformation and conflicting information that people don't know what mm -hmm. they're supposed to do. And it can be very challenging to be a new parrot mom or dad yeah. and then try and wade through all of that information that's available on Facebook or on social media or on websites. <laughs> And so yeah. I like that, yeah, they've got all of this support and, and you know, I'll add in there, obviously you have a fantastic background. Um, you've done a lot of study um, into understanding behaviour and training and uh, kind, fear-free training methods, but you also, I'm just going to click this, you also have um, the lovely Cassie on board with you as well and Cassie has a really long history of working with parrots uh, 20 odd years or so um, professionally with parrots as well. So people know that they're getting good information from. Yeah. 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 I'm, 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 it's um, again, it was that sense of, I mean, sometimes feeling so helpless trying to figure out what to do with my bird. I have this problem with my bird and I don't, I don't know what to do and um, what I wanted to do and I'll, I'll step back away from parrot kindergarten and just say training in general and Lee like what you do in the community is so essential and valuable I want to normalize calling a like a family counselor when the bird's having a problem and what that looks like with those red flags like when do we call and when do we keep trying to work in it ourselves and I know that you know I didn't I felt like I didn't understand you know, when I hear like behavior training and I was a young mom, I was like, you know, does this warrant hiring somebody? Is this just part of having a bird? Like, what does it look like? What if I can't do the things the trainer wants me to do? Like I felt so, I guess, yeah. afraid and insecure to reach out. And, um, you know, and, and, and instead what I want to do is like normalize, reach out. Like, yes, it's behavior trainers, but 
but it's like a family counselor. If my child were struggling, I would call a counselor. And if my bird is frustrated or if I'm frustrated or there's a behavior that's making their world smaller because like they're biting and I don't want to take them out of their cage as much or um, they are screaming and a family member is screaming back, right? Like if there's stuff that's challenging and dynamic in the family, that's why that's why you're there. Like Lee, you're there to like help and support. And that's what, you know, and, and it's such a successful experience for people to get self support and love and nurturing for um for the family dynamics when birds are challenging. Yes. Oh bringing that up is such a it's just made my brain go, you know what? Like I've been in this industry for more than 10 years now. And so sometimes it can be hard to take myself outside of that and realize how daunting it must be for people to consider calling businesses mm -hmm. like ours where mm -hmm. it's, you know, maybe you feel like this person's gonna come in and just judge everything that you're doing with mm -hmm. your animal and, and want you to do things that you don't want to do or can't do. And so you talking like just just that has gone, oh, like, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it is. How can we, how do we help people feel like that's not who we are? Because that's not what I want to come in and do. I don't want to go in and judge right. you like, you know, for what's going on inside your house. Like that's not right. my job. That's not what I do when I walk into clients. But people don't know that until they have a session with us. So I, yeah, doing the Parrot Kindy stuff, really opens up a different world for people because they can come into this nice friendly fun enrichment environment but then also get that behavior help that they need as well yeah yeah so we really um so cassie cassie's our, our parent kindergarten we call her school counselor but she's, I love that. she's a behavior behavior trainer with over 20 years of experience and boy it's been um it's just been such a wonderful, again, like totally 100% judgment-free zone. Whatever is going on in any family, like we say, wherever you are, you're fine, and we're gonna figure it out, and we'll work together. And um, and I, I, I like what you said about um, how you walk in and there's no judgment. And I, that's um, you know, at one point with Isabel, Isabel was really struggling with this new behavior that had emerged where. Um, she would she would pinch my hand because she was feeling very passionately that she wanted to go visit the neighbors and she wanted to let me know. And the way she let me know is she started pinching my hand. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm I'm the trainer. I've been doing this a while. Like, I'm mostly in cognition training and not so much in behavior training, but I can figure this out. And it was months, and I realized like her world was shrinking and my frustration level was up because she really this behavior wasn't getting better. And and I stopped wanting to take her on the patio because I knew when I take her on the patio, she'd like pinch my hand and want to go see the neighbor. And then I would be frustrated because she just pinched my hand. And so I was like, you know, trying to target it. I was doing all this stuff trying to overcome this behavior. And sometimes you just need someone else to like give you some feedback. And one of the things that um, I encourage people to do is buy a series of consults, right? They're like, with your counselor, your family counselor, <laughs> because um, because I knew like one session if I got information, but I didn't have support around the information I got, I might still feel frustrated. And that's exactly what happened. The very first week I got information and I was trying it. And honestly, the information I received, I never got a pinch after that. Like I was told exactly what to do. And, and we worked on this thing and it was so gentle and so supportive and so loving. And I never, I have never gotten a pinch since then. But then we also went on to work on some other behaviors that were coming up and having a series of sessions that were already paid for. I was like, okay, you know, we're gonna, we're, I got six. I was like, I'm gonna get six sessions so that I can get feedback and I can have accountability to help fix these challenges was one of the best decisions ever because because I did. I got a lot of love and support and nurturing. And then every week I'd be like, okay, this is where we're at. And I never had to feel like I wasn't going to be supported around the experience. It was such a wonderful way for us to learn and grow. And it changed um, our dynamics quite a lot. Yeah, that's so important. I think that that's really important. And I think like 
and I like hearing it from the other side of the coin, so to speak, um, and from like the trainer behavior consultant side of the coin, it's also nice to know that you've got a number of sessions to work with someone because otherwise you feel like you're going in and you're, you want to try and fix as, you know, try and give this person as many strategies as possible and, and try and get them on the right track. But sometimes then you give them too much and it's like, no, you know, <laughs> I want to give you this much to work on and then come back and see yes. you again in a, in a week or so and then give you a little bit more. And that sets everybody up for success as well. So, oh, yeah, yes, 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 yes. So, again, like I, I love to normalize this idea of reaching out and getting support because we have little dinosaurs, literally little dinosaurs in our families and their bodies little are different. Dinosaurs. <laughs> their, their bodies are very different than ours in navigating our relationships. And then our school, like that was a lot of it, is that we have a judgment-free zone and I you know, teach cognition training and enrichment and then um, Cassie provides um, nurturing support for behavior. Yeah. And I just, I wanted to share that um, Kaz has commented, um, and Kaz says, it's also important for that help because we're often stigmatized as crazy bird people. It's just a bird, that's what they do. What are you worried about, you know? <laughs> um, having people like Lee and Cassie that take behavior seriously and help us solve our birds' issues is so valuable. Thanks so much for sharing that, Kaz. It's, <laughs> it's really nice to hear those things. And yeah, like, you know, it's certainly uh, an attitude that we, you know, still come up against a lot is that, you know, it's, it's just a bird or it's just a cockatiel or just a budgie. And, um, you know, it's it's good to, like we're seeing more and more people reach out for assistance. So under a variety of different circumstances, which is really awesome. Yeah, yeah. And there's no, um, it doesn't matter how long you've had birds or how long you've been in that world. I mean, if you're ever having a challenge and that challenge, the red flags to me are like the, when, when it's a trigger to reach out, it's like, has, have I been frustrated for more than two weeks around this behavior? Um, and or is it resulting in a smaller or more challenging life for my bird? Is my bird getting less out of cage time? Is my bird you know, experiencing frustration in the home because of the behavior. And if those two things come up, then counselors are available. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, training can fix in wonderful ways. It can. Yeah, there's yeah, so much to it. But, yeah, I've, that's got me thinking what, you've, what we've spoken about. So <laughs> that's, yay. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so... The other one that I was really, and I haven't had a lot of time to involve in this, so I've done a bit of the, um, a bit of the phonics and reading stuff with my Eki Kokoda a few years back. Um, like I said, I admit that I'm not particularly good at just <laughs> continuing. For us, it was a lot of fun to do, and I liked getting that different sense, and um, she was really good at it. So better than me, I think. <laughs> she just outstripped me with that way too quickly. Uh, but you're doing a lot of tablet stuff now, which is super cool. Um, I love that. And I feel like it's something that's achievable for like a lot of parrot people. So I was hoping you might tell us a little bit more about that. And I know that I've got some videos and stuff that you've shared with me as well. So if there's anything that you want me to pull up to show sure. things, you let me know. But yeah, if you could tell us a bit about the tablet training, how that came about. I'm sure it just kind of progressed naturally from what you're already doing. Yeah, so um, Ali, you know, the biggest challenge about Ellie is continue to keep her challenged and those behavior problems sometimes crop back up if I don't have new and interesting challenging things to teach her because that's my girl. Um, and so I felt like, you know, um, she'd already learned counting and a lot of concepts and communication and reading and, um, and uh, we had gotten a tablet a couple of years ago, but it wasn't a very good one. It wasn't a very like um, sensitive yeah. sensitive screen and they got really frustrated. So I kind of gave up on tablets and then Joe, um, my partner last year, two years ago, um, he said, they have it like, this looks like a really good tablet. And Ellie was having some challenges again, cause like she's, she loves to learn. And if I cap out, you know, if I write out a stuff to teach her, she like wants more, you know? So, um, so I, he found this, 
tablet. It's the Galaxy Tab A. Um, and he, he said, I think this would be a really sensitive screen for them. Why don't we go ahead and, and, and try it? And, um, and so we got the Galaxy Tab A. And it felt like this box of wonders. You know, you're like unpacking it. And you're like, I'm get this is my child's tablet. Her email address is Ellie Rose Kuna at like <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, yeah. He has your own YouTube like, like account, like a kid's account. Like you know, you you un you open up the tablet and like you create it for the child, right? And um, it has like all these kids things. So now I get, of course, like all the advertisements and my my own stuff. Like, you have a child in your house? Would they like this thing? And I'm like, okay. Anyway, so we set up the tablet, and um, I always had a sense that with Ellie because she likes challenge so much. I don't usually take, and I'm gonna say like, not in a bad way, but I don't usually take the, the I take the harder route. If there's a harder route to take, I take a harder route. That's what I'll say. <laughs> um, and so I, I decided like I was gonna teach her to try to write on the tablet and like to be able to learn letters because that would be challenging and maybe we could do that for a long time and she would be really happy and excited. And then, you know, there's games and stuff. So um so I wound up getting like counting games and coloring and tracing and you know whatever and it's actually a little bit of work to try to find good apps for birds because a lot of apps designed for children are not really great for birds like either they're flashy and it scares them or they just, they require too much drag and drop you know and like moving yeah. from place to place and like they can't do that really easily so um. We wound up with a with a conglomeration of apps, and my birds fell in love, like in love on crazy levels with the app or with a tablet. And um, and it's a, like it's a bit of a challenge for me because um, I'm a little I'm a lot old school. Like I have physical books. I don't have a television in my house. I'm kind of like trying to be low tech. And they're like, oh, but we want to, you know play this game and do you want to read a book? And they're like, no, <laughs> play the game. <laughs> like, you know, little gaming addicts and we see it at our school too, like the little ones learn how to play the tablet and they're so excited. And the moms are like, like you do have to actually read books still. Okay, come on, we're putting the tablet away. We're limiting the screen time. And they they're like real kids. <laughs> they are, they really, really love it. And, um, and like, I think Kaz is mentioning it. Patrick. Patrick is one of our um, little students, and he he just drinks coffee and he sits out and reads the paper, and he's on his tablet like for forty five minutes, tracing and connecting things and doing all kinds of stuff. So, the point about the tablet is, um, we did start. I was like, she's gonna learn how to write. <laughs> my child is a writer and then um and then also we found all these really fun apps and they really enjoyed it but then ultimately we came back around to the com board and people had told me for years like get your birds a com board and i was like i don't really know how they work and then now i'm like the biggest fan of the com board it's a tech program it's um called an augmentative alternative communication device the com board is typically about twenty dollars and i'm not someone who i don't spend money like on apps generally um, for myself or for the children's. Um, but that one is actually super worth it because um, the other ones that are out there in the world are like $300. So there are professional yeah. ones that are really expensive and then there's the comp board and it's about 20 bucks. And the birds can like learn through associations that they push this button and they get this outcome or they push this button and they get this outcome. And it's really cute. So um, there's, there's a video, I think it's called Want Treat. Um, is it Comboard Ellie Treats Water? Is that the one? Um, that's a good one. Let's do that one. Yeah. That one's a good one. Okay, cool. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Awesome. So I was just hanging out um, on the sofa reading a book, and I usually have the Comboard near her, and she just kind of walked up to it. I think the audio isn't on. Uh, hold on two seconds. If I go do it again, there we are. That should work now. Sorry. So I gave her a treat, so she's asking for more treats. Yep. What do you want now?
more treats, please, Mom. <laughs> Okay, what do you want? To drink. Here's water. Here's some water. Okay, hold on. And then I'm going to pause and, like, so you see she also goes and drinks the water. So yes. She engages in the behavior that she requested. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. There's another one that says Ellie asks to play cards. Okay, give me two seconds. No worries. Ellie. Yeah, you like here or other oh, words? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually I can't see her. I hold it up in a way that this is part of research. This is one of our research projects, but I, I'm holding it up. I can't see her. I'm looking away. I try to center it in front of her, and she actually manipulates my hand a little bit to try to bring it closer for her own purposes. Okay, so carry on. You want to play cards? Yes. Do you want to read a book? Go, go, go. And do you have your cards? Yeah. I love how she's like, it's too far away. Bring it closer. Like, mom, mom. Mom. Oh yes. my God, mom. <laughs> Are you being difficult? Yeah. Right. So, so that's an example of the how the com board works. And it has like menus and sub menus and all kinds of fun things. And hers is pretty extensive at this point. Um, but it's also an example of the levels of corroboration that I think are important in animal, I'll say communication, because, um, you know, there's like, the question is like, does she really want to play cards or is she just like pushing buttons? Right. So I asked her a couple times and you saw there was a lot of consistency. No, no, yes, no, yes. So it was a hundred percent consistency across the questions, but then also I brought the cards out and she engaged in playing cards for like seven minutes. We did like two rounds of, Cards. Um, and and so to me, when we think in terms of like animal communication and using symbols, right, or com boards to communicate with them, we also look in terms of like um, corroboration with their body language and with follow up questions to make sure that we're not just saying like, do you want like, what do you want? And they pick something like, oh, I want to take a shower. And they're like, oh, here's a squirt bottle. And they're like, wait, that's yes. not what it really meant and then they have a bad experience you want to like have consistency with like a couple different levels of okay is this what you want okay cool and now i'm bringing it do you still want it are you still cool with it and then um and then and actually so we did research around that that was peer-reviewed and published this year and it made a much bigger splash than i expected i just thought we were putting together a little paper but it wound up like we've been asked to like write a fuller paper and publish it in another journal too and like make this paper there's been a lot of like a lot of paper um, you were telling me about how much you didn't have to do paperwork anymore but i think, <laughs> I think you probably do nearly as much paperwork <laughs> just a different kind but now we have more yes 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 Let's produce the papers so um so we followed ellie's you know that that one where i'm holding it in front of myself and asking her to select um that was one of the like examples of the research over 22 days we followed all of her interactions with the com board and she had i think 82 and um and in her her corroboration rate so like we would corroborate with follow-up questions and then body language and her corroboration rate was 94 percent and then in the couple times where she actually was kind of like I said, oh, do you want this? And a couple times she said no. And then we went back and we said, okay, well, what do you want? And then she chose something else and then corroborated and then corroborated with her body language as well. So in every single interaction, she actually wound up corroborating, having an outcome that she corroborated. Um, and then 94% of the time, the very first thing she asked for was the thing she wanted. Um, so it was really 
cool because it, you know, it helps us to trust, trust the system. And then I also yeah. say in my everyday interactions with her, I don't hold it in front of my face because sometimes the screen sensitivity can still be a challenge. So I hold it down and I watch where she's generally like touching. And, yeah. 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 So it's fun. It's like fun to see them communicate that way. That's so cool. Yeah. It's something that I would love to do. Could you tell us a little bit of how you get people started on that with their books? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the first thing everybody says is that my bird would eat the tablet. They're going to bite the side of it and like goodbye, $139. And um, I will also volunteer that my birds would also um, break the tablet if, you know, if there wasn't some gentle training involved in how to introduce it. Um, my tablet is a Galaxy Tab A. There are other good ones out there. You want good screen sensitivity. But the other thing that is our, like, secret sauce is that case. The kid's case. going to pull up one of the videos because here we go. You can see it really well. Um, I'll just pull it up and pause it so we don't have to figure out that kid's case. Yeah, so the kid's case, um, it has three handles, one on each side and one on the top. And when the birds reach in to kind of like grab the side of it, because they do, and Isabel still does. I mean, this behavior is its just part of what they do. Um, when they go to like grab it, they're typically grabbing a handle and it's a soft plastic handle. So I'm not really worried that they're gonna like chip it off and get it in their throats or anything. It's very much loved. You can see my my, my cases last about a year, they're $14, um, but that protects the tablet. And the next thing we do is we put a dot in the center of the screen. I don't think I sent you one of these videos, but we, we put a dot in the center of the screen and we target train the birds to touch the dot. And then when they're getting treats and you're kind of angling it around so that they have no choice but to touch the dot because you're moving you're moving the tablet around so that they're moving into it. Um, they learn to touch the dot and when they touch the dot, they get reinforcers and then suddenly destroying the tablet fades away and they really just want to touch the dot in the middle because that's where all the treats are. So they start touching the dot and then we build out from there with coloring books usually like they'll um the paint fills so they're playing and they're coloring but as they do pressure touches it's making a big color change they get big treats for learning the motor skills to be able to pressure touch the tablet um yeah and then that's and then once they're pressure touching you can go to calm board and teach associations with treats or you can do this is a cute one um ellie likes to play games while i clean the house which is very convenient so is I that the video that's that up yeah this is the video yeah. that's up. so she um, she's like to trace I'll, I'll quickly turn that on because also like just last week we did a chat with robin from um canada bird school as well about velcro birds and and so this is you know like such a cool way to engage your birds with something while you're busy. Like, you know, this is certainly one of those activities that once you've taught it to, you know, this kind of stage, it'll keep your bird occupied for periods of time, not for hours necessarily, but, you know, it's a cool way to get them to spend time playing independently. Yeah. Oh, all right, I'll quickly play this. I'm cleaning the house and Ellie wanted to trace. So while I clean the house, this is what she's doing. Good <laughs> job, Ellie. Yay. So, yeah, she loves it. She loves that. She can totally, she can push the back button. I mean, I'll be, I don't leave the tablet out for my birds when I'm not home, you know, like, I, or not kind of like in and out of the room just in case, just in case something's happened. But, you know, it's good. Um, but I'll be cleaning the house and I'll set up the tablet. And she's hilarious. Like, she at this point is pretty good at navigating her tablet and really cute and funny ways but 
I'll walk out and I'll walk back in and I have no idea how she got into like whatever picture. It's not even on the main menu. Like she winds up in robot pictures and she's like, <laughs> I'm like where did you find that? <laughs> so she, she can navigate this entire like game by herself and, and that's so cool. Yeah. She, the bell just telling me she's done a good job and it's time for treats. So she's like independent, but she still wants treats for doing a good job. So it should be like, ring, ring, I finished completely treats. <laughs> I mean, I like treats when I do a good job as well. So you know? yeah. <laughs> I can't blame her. <laughs> Super fair. <laughs> yeah, that makes total sense to me. And like just watching her there, like you can like, she's not getting frustrated. She's not mm -hmm. like fighting at the tablet or anything like that. Mm -hmm. She's really focused on that task and utilizing her tongue in that like really specific manner to get it to work. Mm -hmm. And obviously a bird is going to take a while to get there. If you try for that too soon, you are going to end up with a bird who's like, this is just too hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, it's, it's interesting because, um, every bird is an individual and every learner, I feel like we celebrate the journey of every learner and meet them each where they are. Um, and I think Dr. Friedman says every behavior is a study of one and, and it's absolutely that way. So for example, Ellie, you know, I'll, um, there's uh, like a coloring one too. Like I was working in the office and I walked out and she had like picked some ant or grasshopper to color on my coloring program. And, um, and and she like colors in the lines, you know, like it was just, it was amazing. So she's pretty independent in a sense, but I also think that she does that because she likes like me being excited, you know, she'll like look yeah. back and see, am I watching, am I giving her feedback and am I excited, am I dancing with her? Um, but Isabel is not independent on the tablet. She loves the tablet, you bring it out, she will race across the room and she is, there and ready to play but she if you start to walk back or away like she doesn't she, she starts to vocalize a little bit and she looks more at me than at the tablet so um she likes me to be there and be interacting with her and to be you know reinforcing her that way so all of the learners are you know very different in their in their level of um like what they do not not even levels yeah. of what they do but how they interact with it and it's yeah. sweet it's awesome yeah, and that makes sense. I guess it's, yeah, some birds need more feedback. Do yeah. you find that Ellie spends more time, like, playing on her own now than what she did previous to teaching her this? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a, yeah, that's a really good question. And I didn't think about it before, but or I haven't, like, thought about it recently, but that was a huge thing. Like I had all this guilt about, you know, wanting to enrich her, I guess because she's like, she needs it so much. And, yeah. um, and how do I do that without me being present there? Cause we all have time budgets, you know, we can't oh, yeah. be doing hour long trainings every single day and you know, blah, blah, blah. But the tablet, I think in our school, the, the, the trajectory we try to do is like teach, and then find independent ways that they're enriched on that level. So with Ellie, like she can play on the tablet, but then she can be independent on the tablet. So it doesn't require as much owner, you know, owner interaction. Um, and, and she can access those higher levels of like, like challenge um, without, you know, more, more on her own. And that is, really meaningful to me because you know I, I can be doing other things and she's having a good time but that good time just like you said it's not hours it's like 10 or 15 minutes here maybe five minutes there they ring a bell to ask to use their comm board so um so like we interact with communication throughout the day but the tablet time is probably you know independent maybe 15 minutes yeah 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 that's awesome it's so cool yeah they're fun yeah <laughs> so you also do obviously for the people that maybe aren't quite into maybe purchasing a tablet for their bird <laughs> Yeah. You do a bunch of other stuff though as well. So did you want to talk yes. a little bit about that? As And I think I've got some videos here of that too. 
Yeah, yeah. So, um, so every learner again is really individual, and the reason we have two different learning libraries is because some birds like don't like a tablet. Sometimes owners, you know, don't feel like tablets are what they want to focus on at the moment. And I also feel like having a variety of enrichment, like cognition enrichment opportunities, is good for the birds. So, um, I think I think Ellie would burn out if she only played on the tablet, for example. So we do a variety of enrichment activities. Um, and and I wanted to say like the underdog of enrichment, but it should be like the top one. It just doesn't sound all that like as big a deal as it really is. Books, 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 not reading, touching pictures. It's amazing to me how book enrichment can, and there's one I think is Isabel with a witch book. There's a little witch book in Isabel. Um, yes. and touching them. So, so basically, you know, when we go through the, like the school like, level of training, the first thing we teach people is to um, have, give the birds more environmental control, teach them to communicate what treats they want, what food they want, what drinks they want, what toys they want. So the birds have more control in the environment and more of a voice. And it's really easy training. But as soon as we get through environmental control, which is like two to five minute lessons, they're not long lessons. We move into trust building enrichment and trust building enrichment. I mean, basically it's like a picture hunt. This was for um, Halloween last year. And, um, and the birds love like, where's the dog on this page? Where's the dog on this page? Oh, look, look at this next page. Where's the dog here? And they're getting treats for touching. There's no like real wrong answer, but interacting with their owners using books and having like this new sensory experience because they're seeing new things they're hearing new words the pictures change they like the touch and feel books like i could never rave enough about how much birds really seem to love books and a lot of birds are like book birds they don't even i mean some of them don't learn the tablet they just love love books. So this is an example of that kind of enrichment with Isabel. And she, she actually says hello to the witch. She's like, hello. This is so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'll, I'll hit play. She's on each page. You don't really see it, but she's getting, because I, I try to clip it to be shorter, but she's getting treats after every touch. She's hearing new words. She's seeing new things. And um, and we find that this kind of enrichment, um, like, kind of brings sometimes the birds out of their shell or they it builds trust with them in and, and, and really big ways when there are thunderstorms here or something scary. My birds, my birds probably ask to do this kind of thing every single day. They love looking at books, touching them, interacting. So that's another, it's one of the many things that we do um, on the Ellie's Lesson Library thing is like books, crafts, family card games, learning about music, learning how to count, learning, you know, about animals and, um, and stuff. Yeah. And uh, again, like just coming back to last week's live where we, we were talking about birds that you know people are struggling to get them to like do other things yeah. but also struggling to meet I guess kind of those needs and that enrichment need and I think one of the things we spoke about was that you know it's it's a lot about quality over quantity as well so you're not just spending four hours of time in the same space as your bird 
with them just riding around on your shoulder, but rather really focusing on that quality of interaction. And, you know, so maybe they aren't spending four hours with you, but maybe they're spending, you know, an hour of like quality interactions like this sort of thing throughout the day. And that's that can be a lot better, especially if you are struggling with um, problems where maybe your bird riding around on your shoulder for four hours is just not, you know, suitable, which at most of the time it isn't. So this gives a really good, I guess, combination of different activities that you can do with your bird as well outside of the norm. And sometimes I think people will struggle to find activities like this to do with their bird. They're not quite sure what they can do other than training with their bird. So. Yeah, yeah. If there's time for another video, um, there's one yeah. with Chili, and he does yes, no. Yeah, Chili, I think he's choosing cards. Um, the little green guy. No, it's exactly it. And um, we in one of in our parrot kindergarten, one of our um, families has a an African grey named Molly. And this family, they're just amazing. They um, they have like adopted four parrots that came from a rough like horrible situations. One of them, you know, the owner became homeless and there was like food deprivation and one of the other birds had died. And like, like these birds are really, they're so lucky to be with this amazing family. But one of the, one of their birds, her name is Molly. And, um, and Molly, I guess just kind of like just a shell of a bird still after years, like they would walk by and she wouldn't really acknowledge that they were there and that she didn't really mm. call out to them. And she didn't, she was just kind of like a shell and they started training her on these kinds of lessons with like, yes and no, and the books and such. And, um, and they said that she's come to life. Like she calls for them in the day and she asks for things and she asks to engage in books and like, She's touching the pictures and all the pages, and then she was learning the combo. Wow. And she was the first of their four actually to figure out the associations. Like there was grape and nut or something, and she likes grapes. And and so she was pushing grape and getting a grape, and then she pushed nut and she got a nut, and she was like, Oh, I get it. I get it. No, no, I didn't want this. And she's like, Grape, grape, grape. <laughs> But, you know, really, like, interacting five minutes a day, like, a couple times a week in ways that are trust building can transform relationships and change, like, change things for birds in big ways. So this is little Tilly. He was one of our research guys, too. His, he and his owner, Tori, is just remarkable. She's so great. So he's right. like, yes, no, and he's going to tell her what he wants to do next. They love learning together and he's very opinionated and he's super cute. <laughs> All right, awesome. Want to do shit? No? Matt? Want to do Matt? No? So we see if you can do one and two. So we do those numbers? No? What do you do? Do we do your little cards? Yes. Oh. Push flowers. Nice time. Oh boy. Yay. Oh boy. We're gonna... so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> Whenever he's happy, he wait he like raises his little wings and his little chest. Yes. It's adorable. Oh my yeah, god. That's, that's some of the other stuff for like yes no books, card games, music. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh, so much fun. Yep. I need to get back into this. <laughs> I'm inspiring myself. <laughs> <laughs> funny. Their opinions are really funny. Um, so Ellie now, if I have a babysitter, she'll actually go into her. The first time it ever happened, we had a babysitter, and um, the babysitter wasn't a, like super knowledgeable about birds, like new enough to not like kill the children, but wasn't like super, super knowledgeable about birds. But she has the comm board. Ellie has the comm board. I said, whatever she asks for, just like, you know, do that. So Ellie goes into her com board and to um, say hello to you. mom, 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 mom. And then the babysitter was like, I'm not sure what to do with that. And Ellie pushes back and she goes into a different menu. That's an experience menu. And she goes, experience, mom, 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 mom. And so the babysitter took a picture and she sent me a text. She's like, I think your bird wants to call you. <laughs> I saw you post about that and I was like, that is so cool. It's You're such a, funny. yeah, that's, you know, and how cool that she could ask 
to speak with you, you being away and not not available in person, but being able to say, hey, I want to I want to check in with mom and say hi. That's so yeah, cool. yeah. It's it's really it makes me feel happy that she can ask for that. I just wanted to share this because Kaz has just added another comment. So aside from the resources and classes, the kindergarten has become this wonderful community where all of our birds have different talents and we all get so excited with each other's achievements. It's also become a nurturing time for the parents too. That's awesome. And I bet that makes you super happy because like you said, that's kind of what you were aiming for from the get go. Yeah. When you started this whole adventure a few years ago and coming to fruition with the parrot mm -hmm. kindergarten now which is fabulous so it's absolutely a dream come true i mean it's always it, you know it was always like this this dream that you didn't know if you'd ever be able to like find the time or whatever and and um it's yeah i, I just i love i love our community i love our moms and our dads and our little learners and they're so precious yeah and I think it's, yeah, it, it's just going to open up a whole world of things for parrot, parrot mums and dads to learn about their birds, but to also just provide this, you know, this extra level of enrichment that they otherwise wouldn't have had access to. So, yeah, I think it's enriching for everybody, not just the birds, but the people, which is excellent. So before we finish up, did you just want to let everybody know where they can find you, find your parrot kindy if they're interested in learning more or joining joining up? Sure, yeah. Um, so we're parrotkindergarten.com. And um, if anyone is interested, I have um, I have a like a free handout guide on tablet apps, um, and tablet, like how to choose a tablet, how to choose a game, uh, an, um, a tablet case, and then um, our favorite tablet apps. And we try to make them like available on um, the ones that are available for Apple and for Google Play Store. So um, yeah, parakindergarten.com. And then uh, yeah, happy to send out some free resources on tablet guides. Yay, that's fantastic. And um, you're on you're on Facebook as my reading pets as well, which I think I've I have tagged in my posts so people can easily kind of follow that to find yeah. you that way as well. So yay. Thank you so much for coming and talking to us about Parrot Kindergarten. Well, oh, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. No, it's I really I'm so glad we've had this chance and hopefully there's a few more people that will be aware of it now and come and join you and learn a bit more about uh, enriching their birds' lives with all of this communication because I think it's so important and what you share, the way your birds communicate with you is really inspiring. Um, and to, to hear stories like Molly, the, the bird who was totally shut down and had kind of just given up by the sounds of it coming out of her shell and then realizing that she not just coming out of her shell but realizing that wait a second I have this opportunity to control my outcomes to control my environment to get the things that I want that's changing lives so yeah thank you so much thank you for all you do in our bird community you're a treasure and a resource and um, I'm so thankful for you oh thank you it's nice to <laughs> it's awesome to work with to have this little community that's building where we're all helping parrots and their people. So yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jen, for joining us. And thank you to everybody else for coming and tuning in. If you've got questions for Jen afterwards, because I know it's pretty late here in on the east coast of Australia. So if you're watching this at a, another time, I'm sure if you pop comments, um, I can get Jen to reply to them. Or I'm sure if you message her on her page, she'll be happy to happy to reply to your questions. All right. Good night, everybody. Um, and we will be back again soon, I'm sure, with another live. Sounds good.